Hey everyone, Travis here. Welcome back to Dev Tips. Today we're looking at prototyping in Adobe XD. Last week we took a tour of the design tools in Adobe XD, and next week we're gonna sit down with one of the original creators of the tool. We're gonna to talk about the future of the product and what that looks like. I wanna thank Adobe for sponsoring the series, and let's take a look at prototyping in Adobe XD. When we're ready to prototype in XD, we gotta switch the tab up here to the prototype mode. You can see that the sidebar here goes away. You only have kind of like one tool here, the select tool. What we're gonna be doing is selecting elements on these artboards that we want to create uh, like hyperlinks or clickable areas. So if I click this object here or click any object, see that there's like this little arrow that comes off the right of it. And I can drag this arrow and just attach it to the next artboard. And what happens is I get a modal that will say, okay, let's create a hyperlink or a, a, hot, a hot area. What is it called, a hot area? Hmm. It's so hot. What are the details? Do you want to have a transition? You don't have to. You can do none. Or you can um, use a dissolve or a slide or something like that. What we're going to do is we're going to do a slide up. And the easing, we want to ease in out. And duration, 2.2 seconds is, that's pretty good, actually. 0 .2, 0 0.2 seconds is 200 milliseconds. <clears throat> the first thing also to remember is that See how I have this artboard selected? And look at this little house here is gray, and this one has a blue house on it. That means that when I start my prototype, let me go ahead and press the play button. This will, this will bring us up a new prototype window. It starts with the home screen, which is the one that we've selected up here. If you wanna change the home screen, just click an artboard and then click the blue button. And then when I start the prototype, it will start with the other screen, right? The one that we just selected as the home screen. So let me put the home back on here deselect everything, selecting nothing here and going to the play button. And now let's hit the create an account button and we're gonna see that slide up happen. So 0.2 seconds is pretty fast, I guess. Let me slow that down a little bit. And I don't even have to close anything down to make any edits. I can just go over here and click this button, click this transition and make it 0.4 seconds. Now let's try it. Oh, a little slower and I can see what's happening. It's a little bit more exciting. So you don't have to close this thing. This thing live live updates. In fact, let me uh, let me show you when I'm clicking on different artboards. This um, preview window updates on the artboard that I'm focused on, and I can make I can even make changes if I go to the design tab and change this to like your name. It will it will update here, right? I mean, didn't want to say your name. Yo, Nam. Let me go back to prototype. Okay, so <clears throat> let's prototype. Let's create a user flow here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a journey that the user might click on different uh, areas and create a flow. So we have the login button, and that's going to take us to the login screen, and so is the create account. I mean, we could do a create account flow, but you know, let's we're going to skip that and make it simple. So we just have a login. If I click on the X. You can click this arrow here. You don't need to drag the arrow. You can just choose the artboard from a drop down. It can go to either one of these, or you can click previous artboard. So no matter where you are, when you click this X, it just goes back to where it was, right? It uses the reverse animation of where it came from, which is pretty cool. Let's press continue, and you're gonna go to this home screen here, which basically has all the surf spots and by default, it says slide up, ease in out for a 0.4 seconds. This is where, this is like the default, um, the, the last settings that we use to create this um, previous one. So we don't want it slide up, we want slide down because we want our user, let's click on the home, we want our user to create account, this, this kind of screen slides up, they type their name in, they continue, and it slides down for the, the content reveal. So that, that's a good animation right there. Um, let's close this and just start wiring up a flow real quick here. Okay, so let's say somebody clicks on this search bar, it should go to the search screen. If they type in something, so let's click on this typewriter or the type keyboard here, and it goes to this screen. If they click X, it will do that one trick where it goes previous artboard. X would go, I guess, I don't want to go to this one, I want X would want to go to like this one. Yeah. Um, and if they hit 
enter on this Cardiff, it would still go to this screen, right? Because this is a uh, Cardiff, Cardiff Reef is the one that they're searching for right here, Cardiff State Beach. Okay, um, here's a big, here, here's a tip for when you guys are doing prototypes. You might be tempted to, to, to dive in here and, and make just this one the hyperlink because, oh, well, if you don't go to Swami's or San Ilejo or Pipes, we don't want them to go to the Cardiff Beach. But, you know, the idea of a prototype is not to make sure all of this story uh, in terms of the content is, you know, uh, linear, but really just to make sure that the idea is that if they pick a spots nearby, you go to a spots nearby template, and that's kind of what we're doing. So I'm, so I'm going to say, if you click any of these, I'm going to take you to the Cardiff Reef uh, page. And what's my animation here? Slide down? No, let's just do a... Let's just do a, a dissolve, or none, really. Let me take a look at that. So let's press, press play. What does it look like? Mm, I think it would be better if I just did none. Just a hard a hard cut. Oops, not detail. Yeah, that's better. OK, so this back arrow can be that back button. <clears throat> Search can be, you know, search. And let's use dissolve. Ah. OK, so I'm going to take a few seconds and, and just kind of wire all these up. We're going to go in fast forward mode. You guys ready? Hold on to your butts. Okay, so we've wired up all these screens. If I zoom out and just press Command A for like to select everything, you can see all of the different wires going from page to page. So that's pretty cool. Make sure everything at least has an entry point. Sometimes like you'll be wiring up things and you'll leave a screen out entirely that you've designed. You designed a screen and you didn't even use it in your wire. Uh, wire, why am I saying wire? Your prototype workflow, right? Anyway. So let, let's get this started. Select nothing here so we know that if, if you have a screen selected and then you hit the play button, it will go to that screen. So we want to hit nothing and then hit the play button. So it'll go to the home screen. And let's take a look at our prototype. Now, the cool thing about this is that I want to share this prototype. I want to see how my team or my customer reacts to this. And so one of the cool things I can do, there's a variety of ways that we can share this prototype with our team. And I'll show you one right here. You can press this record button and it will give your cursor this kind of like finger <laughs> and you can click around on things and you can show by example what it's like when um, creating this little movie here that um, that you can export and share with everybody. So let's let's click around Make sure that everything's looking good. All right, yeah, I'm super happy. Um, and then I'm gonna stop the recording and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And then when we watch this movie here, we got a little video that we made. And we can I can email this video, I can put it you know in my Dropbox and share the link around or whatever. And then the whole team can be like, yeah, okay, cool. This is also a really great way to get feedback from um, a user testing, right? So like give this, you know, push play and give this to a user and, and just see how they click and, and ask them their expectations. And all the while you're creating a movie of what they are doing. So then you can watch this later and say like, oh, well, users didn't really understand this part. And, and you can get uh, feedback that way. Now that's one way to make the movie. There's a few other ways to export. You can like actually click, um, click X in there. You can actually click these uh, these artboards and press Command E, and this will just you know it'll export a ping, and you can um, do what you know what sizes do you want? Because remember this is all vector art. You can export it to one X and two X. You can even do three X or a variety of different ones um, for these quick like uh, basically. Uh, export presets here. I usually either do design or web and just actually I've started just doing design, just exporting at 1x and then all of a sudden I've got um, you know what this this ping here. You can do you can collect you can select multi pings and be like, oh these are just the uh, instructor details. Let's press command E and 
and uh, export all three of those at once. You can even export um, certain, let's see, let's click into something. Let's go to the design tab. You can export just this grid here. Press E and when the export happens, I have just this grid of images that I've exported on there as a ping. So you can export a lot of different ways. Let's see, how else can you share things? Um, oh, you can share a link. So if you create this uh, share, you can share online and you can allow comments from your uh, the people you share it with and just create a link. And <clears throat> after you're done here, you're gonna get this link, which um, all the work that we did to set up those blue lines, that, that wiring flow will all be active. And actually let's click, let's, let's, let's do the link right now. Here we are, let's take a look at it. So everybody can, can see can see this and use it. And then um, when they're ready, they can make comments or or whatever, you know? So it's pretty cool. That's a, those are a few really great ways to share in XD. Another way is to mirror the content from your XD file onto your phone and have a tappable prototype right here as, you know, your work. This makes prototyping easy, fun, and a lot of different ways to attack the problem. Thank you so much for watching this episode. The prototyping and sharing tools in Adobe XD are what really sets it apart from the other design tools in the marketplace. And it's really cool to kind of see how that works. I wanna thank my patrons for supporting the show and just being there wherever we go and just being awesome. Every episode, you guys are incredible. And I want to say to you guys, if you are looking for a group of people to, to meet and to join up, uh, come visit patreon.com slash dev tips, and you can learn more about the Patreon community that we have there. All right, that's it. Next week, we're going to sit down with the creator of Adobe XD, and we're going to talk about what it's been like to develop this tool and what the future ideas are. And we're going to see you then. Keep on hacking.